blessed to be here. <coughs> We're so blessed to have you here. Yeah. It's a miracle. God, um, answer a prayer in my heart to be reconnected with some of you guys. Because we don't believe on such good terms. And um, God knew that He knew we needed to be reconnected. So, this is the beginning. <laughs> it's all in the beginning. God's got big plans. Big plans. Um, I've already taught this message twice last week. On Sunday, I've taught it in two different cities where we have churches out there. And I had planned on just doing it here. And my pastor needed to speak it to the other congregations we had, and so he said, well, we teach on Sunday. And I said, well, I've been working on a message, you know, the Lord and I have been working on this message for Missouri. He said, well, what is it on? And I said, it's on the rest of God. Well, that's good. You just do that on Sunday. I said, <laughs> okay, sure. You know, God's in charge, so he knew that I was going to have to do it early, so he had me working on it early. Um, rest has been a very elusive thing in my life. And those of you that have known me the longest know that, you know, I was very type A when you guys saw me. Mm -hmm. I had my finger in every pie, had to stir everything, had to watch every pot, and uh, fix everything. And I didn't realize that that's where I was getting my value. Many people were being blessed, but I was burning out. And I burned myself out, I burned my family out, I burned my marriage out, you know, I burned out relationships because I was never available when they really needed me. I was always doing church stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so the Lord has spent a lot of time teaching me about rest. And he, taught, he told me about 40 years ago that I needed to start journaling and that he was going to teach me many things and I would write them in my journals. And at some point, he was going to have me start teaching out of my journals the things that he had taught me. Well, I've already been doing that, and I thought, well, you know, he's talking to me about rest. I know he's talked to me quite a bit about rest. So I'm going to go back into my journals and see just how much he's talked to me about rest. Mm -hmm. And I had, just in the last 10 years, I had started putting just the things out of my journals that the Lord has spoken to me, not all the other stuff, but just what God has spoken to me. I've been putting it on my computer so that if I was called on to speak on a certain subject, I could just type in that word and pull up all the things that God had said about that. So I sat down at my computer and I put in rest <coughs> and surprised the heck out of me. I ended up with 100 pages, wow. full pages topped on rest. Wow. You think maybe I've needed to learn rest. <laughs> I am still trying to learn. I just want you to know I'm still working at it. Um, at some point in this uh, learning process, I, I mean, I totally burned out. And the Holy Spirit really had to just like pick me up and. Is that better? Yeah, I can see. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Thank you, technician. <laughs> Um, at one morning, the Lord put a chess thing right in front of me, a chess board, in my spirit. He just set it right in front of me, and I said, I don't play chess. I said, my husband plays chess. I don't know how to play chess. He said, that's okay. He said, I'm going to be moving all the pieces. You need to watch. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, great. Mm -hmm. And he said, in the game of chess, the word checkmate has a very negative connotation because it means you lose. But I am ready to show you another perspective. So. Mm -hmm. Slowly and methodically, I am going to remove every self-initiated thing mm -hmm. and win you over to me. Mm -hmm. You will love this game. 
<laughs> okay, if you say so. And rather than cringe with every piece leaving, you will we will celebrate it together. And I thought, oh well, you know, we'll see about that. Then he said one sentence that has stuck with me for a very long time. He said, there is no room on a throne for more than one king, me. Rest and watch, and we will have some house cleaning to do, but the end will be joyous. And I have to say that in the last few years, I've had more joy than I've ever had in my life. And I'm finally learning how to rest, but it's taken a lifetime. And I'm praying that it doesn't take a lifetime for the rest of it. When he said that, it began a process where I began to learn how to say no to things and no to people. And saying no was like not in my vocabulary. Very hard. Because I disappointed people. They were expecting me to say yes, because I've said yes all my life. Why would I not say yes? My husband even. Well, what's the matter with you? Why won't you do that? <laughs> you know. And so I started doing that, but I realized that there were there was lulls in my life because I had been used to 24-7 activity and worrying about people and fixing them and helping them and if I didn't help them, feeling guilty because I didn't help them and you know all that kind of jazz. And I was having periods of, of just quiet <coughs> and not feeling needed. And so I would create things to be needed. I would create things to do to show people that they really didn't need me and I was of much value to them. Mm. You know, and I can do it better. If you just give it to me, I can show you how to do that, you know. Mm. So, you know, <coughs> the Holy Spirit really had a job on his hands. <coughs> One morning, the, recently, probably about two or three months ago, the Lord asked me, he said, if I was to ask you what rest means, you know, what kind of picture do you get when I say rest? And I said, well... Uh, sitting on the beach in a lounge chair with a tall glass of lemonade and listening to the waves come in, the palm trees blowing, some beautiful music, and you right beside me. That would be rest. And I could hear him laughing. <laughs> and that's not necessarily good. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't think she gets it, you know. And... Uh, <laughs> He said, yes, beloved, I am laughing. And yes, that is the picture that most of my bride has of rest. Mm -hmm. But he said, I want to teach you something else. I want to teach you about my rest. And so the first scripture we're going to look at tonight is Matthew 11, 28. <coughs> and this is a, a scripture that we've heard all of our lives, that we've been Christians all of our lives. And yet... I come to understand that it means something totally different than I ever thought before. And it's come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, there are several words in there for rest. And all of them are the number, Strong's number, 372 or 373. I've learned to look up words in Strong's to find out what they really mean. Because a lot of times we teach one way, but if you go back to the original root, it means something totally different than the way that we've been teaching. <coughs> and the, the bottom line for those words are intermission, recreation, refreshment, take ease, to stop, to quit, to come to an end, or to refrain. Well, that's all what I knew anyway. I mean, that's what I thought it was. So, you know, like, what is there? But I looked more into, it got down to a root word of 373. They were mostly 372 words, and 373 was a root word. And it doesn't mean physical rest. It means an inner rest. <coughs> or refreshment, not due to stopping work, but resting from the thoughts and feelings of having to perform something perfectly to be accepted. Now there you 
go. That's a totally different story. Hmm. Not due to stopping work. It's not just like laying and we're resting. It's that you're not worried about having to perform something perfectly to be accepted. <coughs> Don't we all deal with that? I think if you're breathing, you have at least at one point been there. So this particular scripture, when Jesus was saying that to the people, they were living in a culture where the Pharisees, God, you know, God had initially given them this beautiful set of laws and instructions for living. How to live with me and how to live with each other. The Pharisees came along and said, well, you know, these are good laws, but I'm, we're afraid that the people won't do these right, so we're going to create laws to help them do them right. Well, they made hundreds and hundreds <coughs> more laws to where it was impossible for anybody to follow them. And yet the Pharisees were right there saying, if you don't follow them, then you're not righteous and, you know, you need some correction. So the people were in a constant burden of having to perform and ne never measuring up, never being good enough. So that, that's why Jesus t was telling them about the rest. And he was saying, you know, I know how to rest. I've got the answers. If you'll just follow me, I will teach you. I'll even come along beside you and help you. In fact, you'll be yoked to me, and I'll be pulling the most of the burden. And the word yoke there means doctrine. When the rabbis, the rabbi was another name for teacher, and each rabbi had his own yoke, or his own doctrine, his own set of rules that he, all of their disciples could follow. So Jesus' doctrine was rest. You don't have to perform for me to be accepted. You don't have to perform for me to be loved. That's what he was teaching them. My friend, I have a friend named Heidi who lives in California up there with us and on a, our congregation. And she gets out and she runs, and that's how she um, spends time with the Lord each day. And she was telling me uh, a couple weeks ago, we got together for coffee, and she was telling me that one morning when she was out running, that the Lord showed her um, this very narrow path in front of her. And it was no wider than a bicycle tire. And she realized that even her shoes were wider than the path. <coughs> and she started to try to run on it, and one of her feet slipped off the path. And when it did, the Lord spoke to her and told her that the slip of the righteous is legalism. When we start trying to measure up on our own, that's legalism. And when we do that, we slip off the path that he has for us. Because his path is not legalism. It's not rules that, you know, you can check off on your refrigerator each day and say, well, I smiled at my mother, and I did the dishes, and I cleaned the bathroom, and I didn't run the red light, and you know, all these things, so I'm good. But it's not dealing with what's in here at all. He's saying, let's start with this and not worry about all the other stuff. And I'll get you done with that. And he said, you know, that we can't please him with just good works. We please him with just being who he created us to be and following him. In that scripture that we just read, it says, you will find rest for your souls. The Lord said, I want you to look up the word souls. So I did. And souls starts out with a number 5590, but when you get down to the root, it's 4154. You know, in case you guys are interested. I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is the way I study. Yeah. After years and years of this, that's how I do it.